Well, greetings and welcome to Wesley's Own Words, a special podcast version of my Tuesday morning study uh, that I'm currently doing where we are looking at Wesley's Own Words words basically what it says on the tin is what we're doing uh hopefully you've listened to the first couple episodes of this so it makes sense to you we are going through um the original wet writings of john wesley looking first at the nature and design of our united societies an early work that john wrote that he kind of gives us the synopsis of who we are uh as uh who he wanted this group um, that would eventually be known as Methodist to be. And first couple sections we covered his introduction and then the first rule uh, that he lays down, which is do no harm. At first, the first thing you should do is stop making things worse. And in everything that is in your power and in every way you can, first and foremost, just, just don't make it any harder for anybody. It's hard enough, man. Life's hard enough already. You don't make it harder. Um, so now that we've got that, um, that he doesn't stop, stop there. Um, and we broke this up into paragraphs and we're on paragraph seven. If you've downloaded the handout or following along, um, he, he says it is expected of all underscore all I underscored all he says all a lot it is expected of all who continue into these United societies that they should continue to evidence their di- their desire of salvation. Okay, so we're going to continue for more. So before he introduced the first rule, do no harm, he says, if you desire to, con- to, to um, evidence your salvation, first do no harm. And then he continues and says, it is expected by all of those who continue in these societies to now do this next thing. So... What he's saying right there is it's not about just not doing bad things. And I think sometimes Christianity can be um, almost thought of that way. Like we are, our job is to avoid sin, right? Our job is to avoid doing um, that which we ought not do, that it's not good for us or good for our neighbors. Um, and as long as we don't do things, then we're okay. And it's just like, no, the faith is actually not about just not doing things. Um, I mean, there are plenty of things we should not do. Uh, we had talked about those in the last two sessions. Um, but it's not just about not doing. We, there are things we actually have to do, right? We, we have a proactive faith. Um, so it's expected for everybody. And this came up in the class um, kind of randomly because of something else somebody else was thinking about is Wesley has addressed all this to everybody. Men, women, rich, poor, you know, black, white, everybody. So he is not setting up two tiers of rules um, or different rules for different um, kinds of people necessarily, um, though he'll do a little bit of that in a minute. Um, But he's not arbitrarily saying, if you are part of this group of people, here are your rules. If you're part of this group of people, here are your rules. Last week when we talked about not doing harm, one of the things that came up was the wearing of costly apparel. Um, In the Bible, that actually shows up in the Bible um, in uh, 1 Timothy. But in 1 Timothy, it's directed specifically at women. Women are told not to put on gold and costly apparel. Wesley drops the four women part and just says everybody. He's like, everybody. Um, and so I don't know that you could necessarily call um, Wesley a feminist. Maybe in the 1700s, he's a feminist. Maybe he's an 18th century feminist. Um, that probably could be argued. Um, but uh, where we see that is in omission that he doesn't single out um, specific rules for men and specific rules for women. So far, these are the rules, the expectations, and the standards um, for everybody. Okay. So secondly, so firstly was do no harm. Secondly, paragraph eight, by doing good, by being in every kind merciful after their power, as they have opportunity, doing good in of every possible sort and as far as possible to all men. Or read, read that humans, because he means men as in not just men, men, not just male men, not just postal carriers. He means everybody. Um, so we are called to do good proactively, um, every kind um, that we can do that's within our power and that we have opportunity. 
Um, and then he'll go on and, and, and give a little bit more of a list. So similar to the do no harm bit, he's not saying this list that's coming is exhaustive. He's not saying it's everything you have to do um, because you are to look for opportunities um, to help as much as you can in all of the places um, that you can. This is a proactive um, and it's going to differ um, by our ability. It says as far as possible, of every possible sort. So Wesley understands that there's different people have a different ability to do good in different places and at different times. Some of us have access to more resources than other people. Some of us have more education or training than other people. Um, some of us are, you know, more sophisticated, more street smart, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, whatever, you know, makes us us or whatever, you know, gifts and graces we have, whatever resources we have at our disposal, um, you know, whatever. Um, we, uh, it's going to vary um, person to person. And so we need to understand that, that you know, just my way of doing good and what I can do is good um, is going to be very different, could be very different than what you are able to do is good. But everybody has to do it and everybody has to do what they can. Um, and we're to do it to everybody. Um, again, all people, you know, again, men, women, good, bad, rich, poor, whatever. To their bodies, of the ability which God giveth by giving food to the hungry, by clothing the naked, by visiting or helping them that are sick or in prison. So we are not just interested in people's souls. We are not just in the saving souls business. You know, um, and this was an argument at the time that oh well, the church is you know the church is here to care for your soul, um, you know, and your your soul now and in the world to come. Um, and yeah, it's part of what we do. Um, but it's not all of what we do. Um, and so he's right away, um, you know, going straight there. He's like, we are to do good to people's bodies um, by, you know, giving food to the hungry, clothing the naked, and helping the sick and those in prison. Now, prison was a little different back then. They had prisons, um, somewhat similar to what we'd see today. But a lot of people were there for economic reasons. They were, you know, um, a lot of people were there for debtor's prison. Uh, so they owed some money to somebody and they were unable to pay it back. And they're basically thrown in prison until they can pay it back. And, you know, you can immediately see the problem with that. Um, except that what ends up happening is that people rally their friends and their family and everybody to pay off their debt on their behalf. Um, because really the debtor doesn't care who pays it off as long as they get paid. Uh, and so, but oftentimes they, that meant that the prison didn't feel a lot of responsibility towards you, including like feeding you. So if people didn't bring you food in prison, then you might not eat um, while you are there. Um, or you may even go into increased debt um, while you're there. It even gets worse um, for you. Uh, so, but he wants us to, you know, do good to people's bodies in the obvious ways that people need. Um, and so in the obvious ways that people saw need at the time was, of course, hungry people who needed food and naked people who needed clothing and then sick and in the prison who needed visiting and caring for. Um, and we are to do that um, for them. Um, and then it goes on, then it goes on, to their souls by instructing, reproving, or exhorting all that we have intercourse with, trampling underfoot that enthusiastic doctrine that, quote, we are not to do good unless our hearts be free to it. Okay, a couple different things going on here. We got um, doing good to their souls by instructing, reproving, or exhorting them. Um, instructing is fairly clear, right? Like we, if we have information, if we have insight, if we have wisdom, if we have knowledge um, that other people need, we should offer it to them, um, you know, free of charge. Um, you know, if we have some advice to give that somebody uh, may benefit somebody's life, if we have some life experience um, that we can share, um, and that can help make somebody else's life, um, you know, a little bit easier or a little bit more fruitful or productive, um, we should do that and not to, you know, not because we're going to get paid for it or anything like that, but because it's good. Um, so by instructing people, reproving is interesting. Um, not a word we maybe use a lot these days. Um, it sort of has a negative feeling uh, to it because it, it kind of is uh, in a way instructing is sort of a neutral term right like instructing you know it doesn't feel good or bad um, reproving um, you know correcting would be another one um, uh, you know calling out um, you know maybe a way to do it you know if you think about that friend who says that you know really 
you know, unfortunate thing at the dinner party, right? That that maybe they're like, you know, I don't know that my friend knows he's being really racist right now, but he's being really racist right now. Should I call him out for being a little bit racist right now? Um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, there is a time and a place um, for things, but, you know, sometimes we are called to reprove. We're called to say, you know, hey, guys, you messed up. If you ever had anybody report to you in an employment situation, you know, that's fine until it's not. And then uh, when somebody makes a mistake or, you know, then you have to be like, all right, you know, that was not okay. And I need to let you know that that was not okay. Um, and so when we say you reprove people, we're saying to somebody, this, this thing you're doing, it's, it's not okay. Um, or exhorting. We've talked about exhorting before. I love the word exhorting. Um, it's encouraging, right? That, that is a building up. That is a pep talk. That is a, hey, you need to look at what you're doing here and this is for you and you can be better and look how good you could do things if you wanted to and, you know, all of that. And so we are to do good to buy souls by sharing the knowledge and the wisdom and the encouragement that we have to offer people. Um, I think that's that's great um, with everyone we have intercourse with. And that's not intercourse that maybe you are thinking about intercourse, um, but it is it is intercourse as an interaction with, basically. Uh, it's not a limited thing. It's not just limited to people that we meet in church or our friends or our family or whatever. But anytime we are given the opportunity um, to instruct, um, correct, uh, or build up, uh, we are um, invited and, in fact, encouraged to do so. And when we do these things, we are trampling underfoot um, that enthusiastic doctrine. Basically, um, Wesley is now picking on another group, um, another kind of school of thought of the time, um, and a, on something that they may share or say. Um, so he's saying we are not, uh, we are trampling underfoot, we are not following this doctrine, uh, that we're not supposed to do good unless our hearts be free to do it. Um, basically, this is the same idea. is like, well, it's not. Like, doing good in the world, all of these things, feeding the hungry, um, you know, instructing people, giving, sharing your knowledge and wisdom, uh, you know, visiting the sick, that all of that good, good that you're doing in the world isn't really good unless your heart's in the right place. So unless you have your heart right, you got to get your heart right first. You got to get your soul right first. And if you get your heart or your soul right first, and then you can go do good. Otherwise, the good you do doesn't count. And Wesley is kind of calling a little bit of BS on that one and is saying, no, if you were about doing good, if you were about, you know, again, feeding and clothing and teaching and improving and all these sorts of things, um, God's going to use that good for God's good purposes, whether your heart's in it or not. You know, your heart not being in it, you're missing out. You're going to miss out on, you know, the excitement and joy that comes from helping other people. You're going to miss out on the satisfaction that comes with, um, you know, being part of God's kingdom building work. But God's work is still going to be done. Don't you limit. This is John Wesley basically saying, don't you limit what God can do through you and with you, whether your heart be in it or not. So you may be grumpy when you're going down to volunteer at the at the food bank, you know, when you first get there, you may be having a bad day and you're not feeling good. And gosh darn it, you may find a way to stay grumpy the whole time you're there. Great. Who was hurt by that? You were. You were hurt by that. Were the people who got the help they needed? Maybe. They probably would have preferred you not be grumpy with them. Um, but the people who needed help got help, right? And God wanted those people to get help. So, you know, your, your, your heart position um, and your openness to the movement of the Holy Spirit in your life does not keep the Spirit from moving. It only keeps you from perceiving it. Um, so he obviously has a large amount of disdain um, for this idea. Um, and so he kind of blows that one um, out of the water. And then he goes on to say, he says, goes on by saying, by doing good, especially to them that are in the household of faith or groaning so to be, employing them preferably to others, buying one from another, helping each other in business, and so much more because the world will love its own and them only. Man, I really got to do a English to English translation on this one of these days. <laughs> I guess that's kind of what we're doing here. Um so by doing good, we do good. And he says, especially to them that are in the households of faith or groaning so to be. Basically, you know, especially to those who are with us. Basically, especially to fellow Christians, fellow Methodists, um, you know, people you know, people of faith, um, that, you know, when we are about doing good, we should do it especially to them. Not exclusively. 
So this can sound a little odd if you read it um, in a certain way. Wesley is by no means saying exclusively. If, Mes if Wesley meant exclusively, he would have said exclusively. He says especially, which means it's not exclusively. And there were those who would argue. And today it's like, oh, well, you know, I only listen to Christian music and I only shop at Christian stores and I only, you know, wear Christian t-shirts. Um, that's a choice. I mean, I guess you can do that. Um, but that's not what he's arguing for. Um, instead, you know, he's talking about this also kind of good, um, especially when it comes to things like how do we transact life and how do we transact our business? If I need help with something, right, um, you know, one of the people I'm going to call uh, or, you know, reach out to first and foremost um, is, is probably, you know, a, a friend um, and, and or if, if like a friend's not available, then then maybe somebody through church. Like that's a place I'm going to think of. Like who are, what, what communities am I a part of? Well, a big community, of course, that I'm a part of um, is the church and not just as a pastor, but my whole life. I've, you know, when, whenever I've been a part of a church, I think about and I have an expectation that if I need help, if I need assistance, that that's where I'm going to go. Or if I'm if I'm doing things in the life out out in the world, and I think it's interesting that he relates most of these um, to to business about employment and about that that sort of thing, um, or who we conduct business with. Um, you know, we have folks in the life of our community um, who you know do uh, you know mosquito spraying and stuff like that. Well, who do I have come and treat my house? Well, I have them do it, right? I mean, my my priority isn't to you know ne might might not necessarily be to find the cheapest office. My tr my uh, my my priority is to find someone who can do the work, do it work well. Of course, um, reasonable price always helps. Um, but if I can support somebody um, who I know, um, who's part of the same, you know, faith community that I am, then of course I'm going to go to them. Like, you know, that's where you're going to start. This is a little bit human nature um, in a way, and Wesley's just sort of encouraging it to happen. Um, and he said he says so because you know the world will love its own and them only. He's basically saying those who are most interested in worldly things, those who are most interested in, you know. And, and by this, we generally mean money, right? So those who are interested in making money above anything else, accumulating wealth above anything else, getting things as cheap as possible, you know, whatever it is, those people will find each other and they will, you know, basically support each other in a lot of ways. Like if you, you are really interested in making money, you're going to find other people who are really interested in making money and you're going to do all you can to make money together. Um, that is not the bottom line. Um, for for us, if if what I do, you know, even if it costs me a little bit more, um, can then also do more good in the world. If I can some more support a local business, you know, who's owned by a local family, uh, who you know is, has roots in the community and is doing work in the community, even if that costs a little bit more than you know the the nameless corporate corporate chain down the road, well then okay, then then that's what we do. We do that. Um, and, and so he's not saying we have to only work um, with other Methodists uh, by any means, but he is saying there is value in doing business and finding the as many ways as we can, um, you know, to, to bless people um, out into the world um, that we know and that we love and that we care about. Um, and so, of course, we should, uh, you know, prioritize spending our time and spending our money um, on those that we know and trust who are themselves doing the same, right? In order to qualify um, as being in the household of faith, as far as Wesley is concerned, means that you are also out there trying to do no harm and do all the good that you can. And so, of course, I want to support people who are all themselves, trying to do all the good they can who are, are themselves trying not to live in this purely worldly financial bottom line wealth accumulation mode but are instead trying to figure out how to bless um, themselves and each other in the community at large and 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 build god's kingdom of course i want to take my resources and support them who are then taking their resources and doing the same uh similar work that i am like that's how that works um you know because he understands that you know Methodists at the time, who are still, this is a very small group, very, very new group. If they are going to make it, they're going to make it together. And he wants them, that togetherness to be reinforced, um, not just in terms of, you know, how they worship and study scripture and that together, um, but in all aspects of their lives. So where do they conduct their business? Okay, well, if there's somebody in the life of your community that conducts the business that you need, um, you should probably start there. Uh, and then, 
and then we will see how much uh, good comes out of it when we do that. And then we're going to finish up is this last line. It says, by all possible, everything above, basically by all, he's basically saying everything I just talked about. We should do all these things he just talked about. By all possible diligence and frugality, that the gospel be not blamed. Um, he says that last bit because, you know, he knows that we should be out there representing the gospel, representing Christ. We should be involved in Christ's kingdom building work, um, and we shouldn't be ashamed of that fact. But it also means if we're going to be out there representing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ and God's kingdom, then we have to recognize that we're doing that and that, you know, we will be seen as a reflection of the gospel. If we are to be Christ's hands and feet in the world as we are called to be, then we want people to see us that way. And then what we do is not just a reflection on us. It is a reflection on that which who sent us. Um, and so we should keep that in mind. Um, and one of the ways we keep that in mind is we make sure we do what we do with diligence, Right. We don't, we do, we try to do, we try to do it with some efficiency. We try to do it with some urgency. We try to do it with good stamina, right? I mean, we want to stay diligent. We're not, this is not something we just do once in a while when it feels good or the mood strikes us or whatever. We are diligently about avoiding harm and doing good. Um, and then frugality. And it doesn't mean that we don't, we're cheap. Frugality, frugal does not mean cheap. Frugal means that you spend where you need to, and you don't where you don't. And by spend, we mean our money, our time, our energy, our thoughts, you know, our resources, whatever that is. Um, we invest what we have, our time and energy and our thoughts and our resources, um, in those places where we can do the most good um, and we don't spend a lot of time wasting it in places where we don't. You know, being frugal does not mean about not having nice things, and it doesn't mean, you know, about anything like that. Oftentimes, the frugal person won't have as many things, but the things they do have are very nice. And this is the way I've always tried to live, is whenever I have the chance, if I need something, whether it be a tool or a book or, you know, a new computer or, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, so even, even food or, um, you know, whatever it is, if I need something, I work, I try hard um, to find a way to get the, the uh, something of good quality that's going to last a good long time um, rather than something disposable. And if it means I have to forego having that thing, um, you know, for a while, um, then that's what you do versus, you know, I'd rather have a small number you know, of, you know, quality, you know, clothes, um, you know, or, you know, whatever it is, whatever it might be. I'd rather have a smaller number of things that are of high quality that will serve me well um, for years and years and years and years than, you know, a bunch of disposable stuff that, you know, might have been cheap, but it only, you know, or a whole bunch of things, none of which are all that, you know, valuable or, or useful. Um, it's not about collecting trinkets or anything like that, um, you know. That, that's that's not what it's about. So frugality is that. It's about having, you know, recognizing what you need. All of this, all of this so far, all this doing good is about meeting needs, yours and others. Um, it's about have, recognizing what you need and then uh, prioritizing that and, and not um, some wasting a lot of time and energy and money and resources and effort um, on things that really aren't important or necessary. And running throughout this, um, finally, is kind of the last kind of thought is, this idea that while he says these are the rules for everybody, there's a lot of latitude in them, and there's a lot of uh, language about people doing what they are able to do, recognizing that different people have different ability, right? Some people's, you know, spiritual gift is making money. You know, there are some people who just, for whatever reason, are just really good at it. Um, you know, and 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 even you know, good at it in honest ways. They just, or you know, they get lucky, or you know, whatever, or happen to fall in love with a career that also pays well um, and through time and energy and effort um, ends up in a place where they're blessed with a lot. You know, Wesley doesn't have any problem with that, um, you know, but he also expects that those people, you know, in terms of like dollars given are going to be, are going to be able to give more dollars and should. So if your ability leaves you with a lot of free time, um, then the expectation is you're going to be volunteering more of your time than the single mother down the street who does not have a lot of free time, right? 
you know, but if you're the grandmother or grandfather or whoever, you know, then, you know, maybe you're, you know, you're volunteering in the school classroom because you have the time to do it because you are blessed with an abundance of free time because you've worked hard and you did retire and good for you and great and wonderful. And now you have this precious resource that so many of us would love so much more we call time. You know, so yes, of course you can spend more time, you know, doing things. I've heard sometimes the church, they're like, well, we need to get some more of these young people involved and taking over some of these jobs. And sometimes it's true, absolutely. And sometimes it's like, yes, but you're, you know, those young people are busy. They're doing things. They've got small children. They're in sports. They're, you know, here, there, and everywhere, right? Um, and so, or if you have more financial resources than somebody, then yeah, the expectation is that you are going to be able to be and are expected to be more generous, um, at least in terms of like total dollars given, um, than those who don't. Um, but no matter what, everybody is, you know, uh, expected to be about doing good, proactively seeking, looking for opportunities to do good for themselves, for others, for God, things that help them love God, love neighbor, and love themselves a little bit more and demonstrate that that reality um, is true for them in the world. Um, when we do that, um, then we are living by this next rule. All right, we're not going to quite finish this section because the final paragraph in this section, is, it's a bit dense and there's a lot going on there and I want to I want to have some more time to do it. Um, so we're going to leave it there right there, um, you know, for a little bit. Uh, we're going to be on break uh, for a couple weeks uh, while I actually go off and get married um, and then enjoy some time um, away um, after that. Um, so we'll be back kind of uh, middle October uh, where we will finish out um, this 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 writing. We'll finish out the, the general rules um, at our next section, and then we'll move on uh, to our next book. Um, but I am grateful that you have chosen to take part. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying this podcast version of it. I know other people are out there too. Uh, one of the best things you can do to support the church and what we do here is to share this. So if you found this little section or these series, um, interesting and helpful, share it with somebody, text a link to somebody, um, post it on Facebook or email it to a friend or whatever and say, hey, I'm getting a lot out of this. Um, you may get something out of it too. And if you're not getting a lot out of it, that's okay. That's fine. I'm not sure why you're listening now, if that's true, but you know, thanks. Um, but if you are, please do that. I, we, we have to share it. That is part of the doing good, right? The doing good, especially you know when we are instructing and reproving and exhorting, Part of that, we are given so many opportunities to share good stuff. And so anytime you run across good stuff, and especially any good stuff from the church, you know, if there's music you found particularly inspiring and you want to share that out in the world, you know, please do that. If you if there's a sermon or a message or a prayer or what whatever, um, any of these podcasts, please share. Please, 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 please. It does make a world of difference. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, for tuning in. I'm looking forward to doing um, some more of this um, in the weeks to come. Uh, always check us out, johnstown.church, uh, johnstown.church slash live for our worship, johnstown.church, johnstown.church slash give to support us financially. And until we are together again, God bless. <laughs>